Hello and welcome, trainers. I'm Joe. Here with me is my co-host, Dan. Hello and greetings. And today we're continuing our Pokedex playlist? Anyways, today it's Ivysaur. Who's that Pokemon? I'm kidding. Uh, we're not going to do that. Um, Ivysaur is a pretty well-known Pokemon at this point, given it's, it was the, one of the first starter evolution Pokemon. Uh, it's notable that when Bulbasaur evolves into Ivysaur, the, the bulb turns into a pink bud. So it all, it's almost flowering with the uh, green part of the bulb turning into leaves of sorts as it spreads outward. Um, with Ivysaur, according to some lore, starting to spend more time in sunlight in preparation for the upcoming evolution to Venusaur. And exposure to sunlight adds to the strength of both Ivysaur and its plant. With Ivysaur's typically plains, a type of plains field, uh, I don't want to say animal, but plant Pokemon. The main appearances of Ivysaur, in the anime at least, uh, is more, or at least the Ash anime, it's very minor. You could almost forget this Pokemon even exists. It only really uh, comes out in in the uh, Kanto region. Yeah, the, typically, you, well, you have the Bulbasaur's mysterious garden, where Ivysaur is kind of demonized, and you have friends to the end, where Ivysaur is one of them that battles in. Uh, helps defeat Richie and is thus demonized. Like, it's just that Ivysaur is continuously demonized in the anime. And I, I can't understand why there's such a hatred of Ivysaur. It's almost as bad as the anime's hate, writer's hatred and whatnot of Raichu. Because I know that uh, at least in um, at least in Journeys, they take the first appearance with the Ivysaur going to evolve... And they, and they changed it that it was a more natural, positive thing. That the Ivysaur were not to, to be, be scorned. They were, they were, ju they just love sunlight. And yes, they're a stubborn creature. Yeah, I, it might sound weird, but I've always found myself a little, as I've said in the previous video, a little scornful of Ash's Bulbasaur as uh, Peter Pan syndrome. And I know people may say, well, you're rather scornful of Bulbasaur. He's actually a positive character. No, he's not, because he decides to stay in mom's attic, so to speak, rather than growing up. And Ivysaur is kind of the adolescent phase of the Pokemon. And at least that's how the mid middle evolutions should be regarded. So, yeah... That's where I, I have a softer spot for Ivysaur than Bulbasaur to an extent. And that has to do probably with the fact that on my first playthrough with a Bulbasaur, I was very impressed and pleased with my Ivysaur. And I'm glad that in later games, they buffed him because they many... You behind, didn't need much buffing. You had pretty good stats. Yeah. But many of the other... Uh, the two other starters, the Char Charmander and Squirtle... They did get uh, good... Better move sets. Better move sets. They were able to uh, stand up in uh, tournaments a lot better. But Venusaur finally uh, became more viable than the two others. Now, that said, in... Well, we're just going to read through some of the Pokedex readings of from different sources. Um, in episode 51, Ash's Pokedex, it reads that the seed Pokemon Ivysaur, Bulbasaur's evolved form, the bulb on its back absorbs nourishment and blooms into a large flower. You have Serena's Pokedex, which says Ivysaur, the seed Pokemon, 
As Ivasaur takes in nutrients, a large flower blooms from the bulb on its back. Goes uh, Rotom Phone. What the heck is that? It's, uh, it is Pokedex. Okay. Yeah. Ivysaur, the seed Pokemon, a grass and poison type. Finally, someone acknowledges that fact. The stronger the sunlight it absorbs, the stronger this Pokemon becomes, and the larger its flower bud grows. Ivysaur, though, would would get a lot more attention and positive attention at that in the red, green, and blue chapters of the Pokemon Adventures manga, where Red's, uh, Red's Bulbasaur decided not to be obstinate and uh, was keen to evolve into Ivysaur for the for the big power increase and did so in the War Turtle Wars. And he was to evolve into a Venusaur during a battle with the legendary bird hybrid at Self Company in the Winged Legends. But Soar truly shines as an Ivysaur. And, well, Soar is probably the most stubborn and obstinate Pokemon. At, like, in terms of characters in all of Pokemon history of the franchise, because much as we all know Charizard, well, Ash's Charizard to be obstinate, Soar is even more so. Soar is stubbornness and willpower personified. Well, this is an Ivysaur that goes up against a Charmeleon all the time and uh, when it's an Ivysaur, and when he's an Ivysaur, and Soar actually wins and scores victories against a Charmeleon. That's not an easy feat for a grass type. Although I'd say probably in game terms, the idea of Soar is kind of what I kind of do probably on a greater level where I tend to have my uh, starter be 10 levels ahead of my other Pokemon more so that there's more emphasis on my starter and they're my trump card. I would probably say that in the Adventures manga... Red probably has Soar 20 levels ahead of his others for the most part. Like, oh, well, Blue's Charizard is at level 65. Soar is at level 85 or something. And either that or like levels or like level 80 or something, like 15 levels higher. It's just Soar is really powerful in the manga. And arguably he is kind of red's ace in the hole and that ivy sore like it's been a long time since i read the manga but wow does he ever prove himself to be a powerhouse contrary to how ivy is presented as just an abomination in the anime and deserving to be genocided out of existence or Team Rocket Capture Fodder. Yeah, yeah. As much as I liked Episode 2 of Journeys, the Ivysaur were, was essentially there just to introduce the, the fairies. Yeah. It's just there's a weird almost scorn that they have for Ivysaur. That said, Ivysaur is a playable character in Super Smash Bros. Brawl and... Uh, has been ever since in Super Smash Brothers as one of the Pokemon trainers Pokemon alongside Squirtle and Charizard and Ivysaur in Smash Brothers as we all know is actually not that bad mm -hmm. this is one time where Ivysaur is not poorly treated there was a time where my primary main was uh, Pokemon trainer sure initially I didn't use uh, Ivysaur as much as Charizard or Squirtle. But I've I've learned how to use Ivysaur and quite the un underrated uh, Pokemon amongst the three. Yeah, I kind of prefer Squirtle and Charizard in Smash Brothers, but Ivysaur can be pretty reliable in there. Mm -hmm. He's probably the one that deals the most solid hits. I guess. I don't think we've got much more to add on the topic so we'll close it out there next time everybody could probably predict we're going to be discussing venusaur 
So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were Ivysaur chucking razor leaves at it.